Hi, I'm Richard Moraes, Senior Minister at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I want to thank you for visiting our website and for tuning in to today's message. If you feel inspired by today's talk, I really encourage you to make a donation by hitting that button below and making a contribution to this ministry. It'll allow us to continue these messages online and to do the great work we do here at Unity of Phoenix, which is to inspire people to live better lives. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for your support, and we hope to see you at a Sunday real soon. Morning again, everyone. So there's this little girl that's biting her fingernails all the time, and her mom, to try and get her to break this, break this bad habit, tells her, if you keep biting your fingernails, you are going to swell up like a balloon and be so big. And so the next day they're walking, and they see this uh, really large guy with a real big beer belly, and the little girl says, Mommy, will I get that big? And she says, Honey, even bigger, so you've got to not bite your fingernails. So they get on the bus, and um, sitting near them is a very, very, very pregnant woman. And the little girl can't help but stare at this woman. She's staring at this pregnant woman. And then the woman gets so uncomfortable, she leans to the little girl and says, excuse me, little girl, uh, but do you know me? And she says, no, I don't know you, but I know what you've been doing. <laughs> Whew, that, that was bad. That was a bad, bad joke. So how many people here have uh, ever had a bad habit that you had a really hard time breaking? Anybody ever have a bad How many people ever wanted to develop a good habit, but you had a hard time sticking to it? Anybody? So today we're going to start a three-week series on how to create some good habits and how to break bad habits. Most of us don't think of uh, the impact that habits have in our lives, other than, you know, I've got a, a bad habit, I'd like to start a good habit. But there was a, um, uh, a, an English poet in the 1700s, and he said, about the impact of habits. He said, first we make our habits, then our habits make us. You know, James Clear, who's an expert uh, in habits, and we'll be looking at his book, actually said the key to success in our lives, the greatest indicator, is not about your, how big your vision or your goals are, that it's absolutely 100% the byproduct and the result of what our daily habits are. The habits are consistent, behaviors and practices that we do over an extended period of time, and that these small actions and changes actually can have a huge impact over time on our level of happiness, success, and improving any area of our lives. You know, in 2003, uh, the British cycling team hired this guy named Dave Railsford to be their uh, performance um, director. And at the time, uh, the British cycling team had suffered over a hundred years of uh, mediocrity would be optimistic. They had never won in 110 years the Tour de France. They had only won one gold medal in the Olympics in 100 years. It was 1908. These guys were so bad that European bike manufacturers did not want to sell them bikes to be associated with such a, a, a bad team. That is how bad they were. So then this guy comes in and he says, okay, he's got a strategy for improving things, and it's called the aggregation of, the aggregation of marginal gains. And what he wanted to do was make little improvements, 1% improvement in a number of areas, and see if these little changes could make a big difference. Simple changes like changing and making their seats more comfortable, having their shorts and their uniforms be made of a different kind of material, and getting that, that material heated so it would keep their muscles warmer. They looked at what kind of mattress they slept on, what kind of pillows they used to, to get better rest. They used a massage to uh, recover quicker. They even uh, looked at washing their hands on a regular basis as a practice to stay healthier and not catch colds. And do you know within five years, the British team at their, the Olympics at, at 2008, they won 60% of the Olympic medals. At the next Olympics, they'd set nine Olympic records and seven world records. Over the next five years, uh, the ten years, they won the Tour de France five times. They won 178 um, uh, different uh, international championships, and they won 66 gold medals. All by making a 1% little improvement over time, it made a huge... They dominated dominated cycling from being absolutely obsolete. 
Everybody know the, the, the compounding interest thing and the power it has? Like if I were to give you a choice between a million dollars right now or a penny that would double every day for 30 days, we'd all generally lean towards the million bucks now. But in 30 days, that one penny that doubled would be worth $5.3 million. Well, similarly, habits are the compound interest of self-improvement and making our lives better. How many people after hearing that would say at some level, you kind of believe that small changes can make a big difference over time? How many people would say that? How many would say that habits would be, could really be the compounding interest of success? How many people would agree with that? And yet, why is it that we don't take advantage of small changes and simple regular habits towards improving our lives and letting them make a big difference in our lives over time? And here's the reason I think. It is because we have this cultural mindset that is the exact opposite of exactly what would be needed to utilize small changes. Here are some of them. The first one, I'll call it that we have this idea that massive success equals massive action. We are always looking to hit the Grand Slam home run. We are always looking for that big break, that one next thing that's going to bust it out for the quantum leap. We're looking to win the lottery. That we have this mindset that overvalues one thing and under, uh, one big thing and undervalues small things. And here's what we end up doing. So if you want to improve your life in some way, like you want to get more fit or you want to write a book or build a business, we put pressure on ourselves that we got to hit it big, that we got to bust out, that it's got to be fast and instant success. Otherwise, there's almost failure because we believe in this big, hit it, massive success thing. And so we not only overvalue the one big thing, we undervalue all the small things. We begin to think that small things are so insignificant. You know, I went to th the gym three times and I'm still not in shape. <laughs> I took four Mandarin lessons and I'm not bilingual. I ate six salads last week and I'm still the same weight. And so what happens is, because it's so insignificant, it doesn't change every single day, that we think, ah, oh, well, you know, I could just skip one. I could just skip another. And what ends up happening is we end up not doing it or doing it so spotty that we don't reap the benefits of the change. The third reason that it doesn't work in our culture is we are an impatient people. We want it and we want it now. We want it yesterday. The things move way, way too slow. That we want to be an overnight success. Everybody wants the fast track to losing weight. The fast track, you know, to, 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 to gaining well. We always want fast. And then the final one is, to be honest, we're a little bit lazy. We look to get the biggest result with the least or even no effort if possible. That's really what we want. <laughs> and so you can see that mindset in our culture that gets confirmed over and over again really doesn't fit the idea of small changes over time making a big difference. You know, if we were observing that, bi that, bi that, bi that bicycle and cycling club, we'd say it took five whole years. <laughs> but they dominated, and it's amazing. So James Clear uh, uh, wrote a book called Atomic Habits. And he used the word atomic, obviously, intentionally, because the atom is small but powerful. The atom is what makes up molecules, which makes up everything. And so he's saying that there are habits that are atomic, small and powerful, that can create remarkable results in our lives. There are small things we can do consistently that will transform and will have a more lasting impact on the kind of life that we have. And so over the next three weeks, we're going to look at how do we create these powerful atomic habits and how do we use them to break habits that aren't uh, helping us and to create more positive ones that will take our lives uh, to a, a greater level. So if a plane was leaving LAX for New York, but it altered its angle by just 3.5 degrees, it would end up in Washington, D.C. Doesn't sound like a big deal. But some, you know, when it takes off, it just can't really tell much of the difference. But where it ends up ultimately is hundreds of miles away. Sometimes we think what we're doing right now is going to get us to New York. But based on what we're doing, sometimes we're going to end up getting to a place that we did not intend to go. 
Because the reality is positive behaviors compound and so do negative ones. You know, positive attitudes compound, but so do negative attitudes. That all the things we are doing in our lives are going to lead us and create a trajectory over time that's going to add up, that's going to make a big difference. And the fact is we need to kind of, the first thing we need to do to, to, to begin to change and transform our lives and use atomic uh, habits is to understand what we're doing. Here's what he says. He said, the greatest challenge to improving our habits and our lives is maintaining an awareness of what we're actually doing and the impact that it is having for us down the road and it will have for us. He says, what we're doing and why we're doing it's important, but also understanding the effect it's going to have and the trajectory it's going to take us on uh, over time. That if we're not aware that, it, that we will keep doing the things we're doing and end up being in places we don't want to be. Here's what Carl Jung said. Carl Jung said, until the unconscious becomes conscious, it will direct your life and it will make you uh, call it fate. And so what he says we need to do is take an inventory of your daily, um, of, of your daily habits. Like literally do this, wake up, turn off the alarm, check my, my cell phone, you know, have a cup of coffee, take a shower, eat some chocolate, whatever it is, <laughs> that literally listing exactly what you do all day long will give you an awareness and an inventory of what we're doing. Because sometimes we are so on automatic pilot, we don't even realize what it is we're doing. Like literally making a list like that will begin to, to bring to an awareness that yes, yeah, smoking a cigarette might bring some peace in this moment, but what's the trajectory of it over the next five years or 10 years? Again, eating uh, chocolate for breakfast might feel good in the moment, but is, where's it gonna be, uh, be in three years and, and five years? So just making it an inventory to become aware of what you're doing and looking at the trajectory of where that is taking us and asking myself, is that really where I want my life to go? I mean, it seems simple, but, but, but it's important. Everybody, I want you to think of one habit you know that isn't good for you that you're still doing. If you don't have one, I have a couple I could lend you. Anybody? Okay. And here's what I just want you to do, is just be aware that that particular habit I have maybe isn't the best thing for the next five and 10 years of where I want to go. And you don't even need to do anything about it this week. We will next week. That you don't have to, because, I, just awareness alone suddenly begins to shift our perspective. Just our awareness alone will begin to shift how we feel, how we think, how we show up, and it, it'll eventually spill over into what we do. But just be aware. What is one habit that I know that isn't good for me? And to just be aware of it, because it's not leading me where I want to go. And then the second thing, uh, and then the third thing with the inventory is... Uh, be aware of a um, habit you're doing that's pretty good right now. You know, like you wake up early in the morning and you do yoga or meditation, you know, or you go to the gym, you know, three times or five times a week. What's something you're doing good? Because it's important to notice this is a good thing that I'm doing, that I'm consciously doing this good thing. And over time, this thing is going to have a positive impact on my life. And you could even think, okay, that one good thing that I'm doing, What's 1% that I, that I could even improve the way I do it? That literally just becoming aware of what we're doing, being aware of the habits that aren't the ones that would lead us to something greater, and noticing the ones that are good for us is important. Awareness alone begins to shift and change us in an amazing way. Because in life, only one or two things are happening. You're either contracting or you're expanding. That your habits are either working for you or they're working in a direction that you don't want to go. That they are either helping support the life you want to create and enjoy or it's not. So the first thing for us with our habits is take an inventory of it, pick and notice one that isn't working well for you, and then notice one that is working well for you that you might even want to improve by 1%. Okay, and then the second one is uh, to be aware uh, of the process that's involved. How many people ever worked hard at getting uh, some results and got no results? Nothing was changing. Everybody felt like you're working really towards something and things are going uh, nowhere. And, and, and the fact is that um, 
when things aren't going as well or as quickly as we want, we give up, we bail, we think it doesn't work, and, and we try and uh, move on to something else. But the truth is that there is a process that requires patience and persistence for us to make progress. In Scripture, it says first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. That there is a process of growth. There is a process of success. Like when you plant, you don't just go to harvest. There's plant and growth and cultivation, and then there's harvest. And many, uh, and most of the time, in anything we're growing, we can't see the progress that's being made. It's underneath. It's, it's beyond our eyes, but knowing that it makes a difference in the work that we're doing. I'm sure you've all heard of the bamboo tree. You cultivate it, you work it for f and five years, nothing happens. And then after all those years of cultivating and watering and fertilizing and all that stuff, it grows 90 feet in six, six weeks. 90 feet in six weeks. So tell me, was nothing happening for five years? Or was something happening, but we just couldn't see it? And a part of the patience and persistence is to trust the process, to know that your work isn't in vain. I always tell people this. So if you meditated for 10 minutes and your mind wandered for nine and a half, did you waste nine and a half minutes? And I would say no. You engaged and had an intention to meditate and made yourself available to quiet your mind. And part of that process is when it doesn't look like it's working, but you're still putting in the effort. Effort isn't wasted. You are just building things up, like priming the pump. And so we cheat ourselves out of success that's been built up because we haven't seen the result come um, and, and, and break, um, uh, to, to break through the earth yet, to, to see it visibly. There's a lot of things you're doing right now, and we just need to trust that process to know that the growth is taking place. The, the breakthrough is going to come, but you need to be persistent, and you need uh, to have patience. And we need to say things to ourselves, like even when the results aren't coming, to know that all things are working together for my highest good. That things are coming, that things are building, that things are improving, even if I can't see it yet. That it will come and keep trusting the process. Keep trusting the process. Keep doing the work. It isn't easy. It isn't frustrating. Sometimes you feel like you're, you're shooting blind, but you just got to keep it moving. Keep it going and keep trusting. How many people heard of Lizzo, the, the, the music artist Lizzo? I never heard of her until a month ago when I watched Saturday Night Live with Eddie Murphy and she was the musical guest. I love her. She is amazing. So I saw an interview uh, with her, and so she had a tough time. She was heavy uh, her whole life, and people, and this uh, football star, the thing from grade five to senior year called her these horrible names. People would put her down all the time. And she was a music geek. She played uh, the flute, classical flute. She actually went to the University of Houston and studied classical flute. Her father died in her second year of university and she was so devastated, already struggling with her self-image. And when her father died, she just gave up and quit school. Even though she loved the flute, even though she loved music, she was devastated. She was homeless for a while, just sleeping in her car, and she was just struggling and struggling and struggling. She saw an ad on Craigslist for a group that was looking for a band, uh, for, for a lead singer. And she was a rapper, but she was desperate. And she thought she'd give it a try. She went, and they thought she was a great singer, which shocked her, but gave her some confidence to be a singer, not just a rapper. And then it took her eight years to find her voice, eight years to figure out who she was, eight years to develop her style. In 2017, she, she uh, led with her uh, first album that went nowhere. But somebody liked one song called I Think Truth Hurts. And it got put on a movie or something on Facebook. It went viral. And her career exploded. But what I loved was when she described all that she went through, that all she kept struggling and believing towards her own self-image, towards her own voice, to getting over the loss of her father that really helped her to get where she, she is. She doesn't just talk about it exploded. She talks about the whole thing and how she had to show up for all of it to make that possible. You know, they say uh, that sometimes with chiseling, it's the hundredth blow that breaks the rock. 
That means that the first blow and the 50th blow and the 99th blow all helped make that rock break too. And even though nothing happened on the first, the 50th, or the 99th, it's like you gotta, if you didn't hit it on the 100th, it wouldn't have happened. If she didn't hang in there after the death of her dad, after all those insults, after all the years of trying to figure out who she was, she wouldn't be where she is today, and we wouldn't be. So the question is, for what you're doing right now in your life, are you willing to have patience and persistence and trust the process until the progress breaks through in a great way? And then the final thing is to send a ripple of new momentum out into the universe. So James Clear, when he was, um, I think, a junior in high school, he got hit in the face with a bat. He was injured so badly, they had to helicopter him to a hospital, and, he, and they had to induce a coma. When he came out of it, he had to have little habits to help him relearn how to do a lot of things. Two years later, amazingly, he went to Denison University. He wanted to be a baseball player his whole life. Uh, he didn't make the starting lineup, but he was, did make the team. And he decided, okay, I might not be a starter, but I'm going to do some little things that might help me. So he started going to bed early in the dorm, even though when all the kids are partying, he consistently went to bed at the same time, got enough sleep. Consistently, he kept his room clean. He consistently uh, did the study of his work in, in blocks of time that he disciplined himself for. He started feeling kind of empowered about himself in his life, started lifting weights regularly. In his second year, he made the starting team. In his third year, and every semester, he would add a little habit, a little habit that would improve his life. His third year, he was the captain of the team, an All-American. And in his final year, he uh, won the President's Award, the highest honor at his university. He kept experimenting with habits and started doing little blogging things. And over a period of time, one million followers. And he kept doing it, kept experimenting, kept experimenting, two million followers. Then he ended up writing his book. Next thing you know, he's speaking all over the world. Next thing you know, uh, Forbes magazine, Time magazine makes articles on him. Next thing you know, NBA coaches and NFL coaches start calling him for advice on how to create better habits for his team. And it started with one habit of going to bed early years later that rippled to another one, that rippled to another one, that changed him and changed his life. And over time, his life was transformed in an amazing, amazing way. What's one ripple of one simple habit that you could make? Do you know one of the habits they say that changes us and makes a better difference than we realize? Getting up and making your bed in the morning. And here's why. Because what happens is the brain, when it sees organization, when it sees order, that it begins to see other things in life and wants to put them in order. That when you see yourself doing that, you feel like you have more control over your life. You feel more organized. You feel more confident and have a better self-image. One thing seems unrelated to anything but a consistent habit of doing it begins to imprint something new within us. Doing yoga or meditation daily, something in us realizes, hey, I'm committed to taking care of myself. I'm committed to my own health. And done consistently over time, guess what? It'll spring to some other little thing, some other little thing, and that'll become a big thing. These things are powerful and they're important. And so don't be guilty about wherever we are, think, oh, I should have done that 10 years ago. No. We meet ourselves right where we are today, and what's one habit you can do regularly that you commit now that will create a new ripple of momentum, a new ripple of energy? And it could be making your bed. It could be going to bed at a consistent earlier time. You know, it could be to make yourself breakfast every morning. It could be to commit to drinking a gallon of water every day. It could be to commit to five minutes of meditation. It could be to commit to reading five pages a day. It could be anything you want it to be. But what is one positive habit you would add to your life 
and see the kind of amazing things it does for you. Habits. They compound, and they can compound for your betterment or to take you further away from where you'd like to go. And so this week, I want to encourage all of us to take an inventory of our habits, to look at one habit that isn't working and think about the trajectory and ask ourselves, is that where I really want to go? Look at a habit that is working for you and even try to improve it uh, a little bit. Trust the process. Everything you're doing is not wasted. It's building up. Things are improving in your lives. Things will get better, even if you can't see it at this moment. We all need to hang on to that and add one new ripple of good energy and momentum in your life. Because the one thing I know is that these atomic habits teach us that tiny changes can make a big difference. God bless you all.